I'm going to hit my control here and we're going to launch the disc and it'll just pretty much look like it just disappears. So there it is. It hit the ceiling and didn't really uh, do much damage because we only use one disc. Okay, this is an electromagnetic launcher built by the students at, in the GET program at Tri-County Technical College. The purpose of this project was, well, there were several purposes. One was to explain power semiconductor devices, and this uses a high-powered SCR that you can see right there, and a three-phase rectifier module that you can see. Um, all these parts were basically pulled, most of the parts, I should say, were pulled from a variable frequency drive that wasn't being used for anything else, so you can get most of the components from that. And this also very nicely demonstrates inductance, um, or I should say induced currents and electromagnetic launching due to induced currents in materials. So the students put this together and it launches hard drive disks that look like this. We lay these on the coil. The coil was built by the students also. We created a jig to wind these flat coils because that's really the best way to build a coil to launch these discs. And these discs, by the way, um, are made out of aluminum. They come out of hard drives, but a lot of people don't realize that um, these discs are actually coated aluminum. They have a magnetic coating on them, but they're aluminum, so they're a pretty good conductor of electricity. And I'll show you in a minute how this works. I've got a schematic here on the board. So we're using two transformers in, hooked in parallel to 120, and those two transformers on the secondary side are hooked in series. So that gives us twice the available voltage from each transformer. And we feed that into a voltage doubler, which consists of uh, the couple of diodes you see and the capacitors. Now the capacitors are hooked in a series parallel combination that gives us the same capacitance for one capacitor. Um, we put them in this arrangement so that we would get more voltage available from the capacitor bank. Um, so we have double the voltage that we would get from one capacitor um, and uh, we had to put a second bank in to keep the capacitance the same. That's one of the things you'll learn about series and parallel capacitors. Okay, so I've turned on the power for this unit and you can see the voltage coming up, 580 and climbing, 600, um, and really it's going to reach the peak value of voltage, um, which is higher than the RMS value for the voltage. So if we double 120, you'd ordinarily assume that you would get 240, and if you doubled 240 in a voltage doubler, you'd expect to get 480. Uh, but we actually get a higher voltage than that because uh, we're actually going to reach the peak value of the voltage and not the R, not double the RMS value. So we're at 680 volts and our capacitors hooked in this series parallel combination are capable of holding 800 volts. This is our SCR unit. This is an SCR that we pulled out of a an older variable frequency drive. So there's the information on the side of the SCR and we'll look up the specs on that in a minute, but it's actually got um, an SCR in it and a diode in the same pack. And we're not using the diode in this particular application. And there's a three-phase rectifier that's taking, and we're only using one of the AC legs on that. Um, and I'll show you the schematic for that, what that looks like normally to make our, and this is used to make our voltage doubler. We're just using two diodes out of six in this package to do that. Um, there's our resistors that we're using to charge the capacitors up and prevent any kind of inrush current. And these uh, transformers are really just one-to-one uh, -one transformers. They convert 120 volts in to 120 volts out. They're just isolation transformers. And it was the best way we could think of, and we had these available, it was the best way we could think of to build our voltage doubler and isolate it from the line. And this particular capacitor bank was just something we pulled out intact from a variable frequency drive, but it's really just what I showed on the schematic on the board. It's just two, uh, it's four capacitors hooked in a series parallel combination um, to double our voltage and still keep the same capacitance as one capacitor. 
This is our coil. We've got about 100 turns of wire there. I'll so now I'm setting a, a tablet uh, on top of this, and we're going to see what happens when we launch it, or when we try to hold it back with a, something sitting on top. We're at 700 volts. And so you can see this thing is very quick to react, and it put a, lot of, a large impact or a large impulse on that tablet. Now if I put another disc on there, we'll get even a better effect on top and a tablet on top of it because I am indoors and I got to be careful and we're going to launch so you can see we get quite a bit of force there from the combination we've also found that setting things like uh, tennis balls or golf balls on top of the discs works really well I'm going to launch this once and the disc right now by the way is a little warm just from that, uh, that last launch so I'm going to go ahead and launch this one more time with two discs on it and we actually made a little mark on the ceiling there from that one um, three discs we probably put a hole in the ceiling in fact we do have a hole in the ceiling from a launch we did right there and there um, not realizing how much force we were going to get from it Okay, to discharge this, I've really got to turn the power off because it starts to charge instantly after a launch. And so the way I'm going to discharge it right now is stand on the disc to sort of dissipate the power from it. Um, and it'll slap your foot pretty good. You can hear that distinctive impulse sound. Very, very quick, and it's over very quickly. This disc is actually getting a little warped. You can sort of see some, uh, some bending in it from doing a lot of launches, and we did some launches with golf balls outside. Um, I'll take it outside sometime and show it to you there. Hope you like that, and I'll explain a little bit later on in another video about the schematic and how to gather parts for this.